uh, particularly interested given given his expertise he's uh, particularly interested in edtech he is also a youtuber so uh, in the uh, midway during the session we'll drop a link to his uh, youtube channel too where you can go and subscribe and check all his videos regarding product manager so all the aspiring product managers here you know if you want one if you want to know that one guy who will guide you through the journey this is the guy right so um, i think that is shravan tikko in brief and that is only a portion of it but here you go shravan it's uh, your stage from now on sure yaar amazing guys first of all thank you very much for calling me i think that's a very kind introduction that arjun did but yaar aaj ka topic kafi interesting and let's keep the session very very engaging very informal trying to understand why product management is important mai karta bhi kya hu jitna inhone tareef kar di hai mai uske kabil bhi hu ki nahi hu so all of those things let's just talk about all of those things and in between if i switch to hindi in between just bear bear with me i just don't have a very good knack of speaking in english so right so i'll try my level best and the topic was very interesting jo mujhe arjun ne bataya tha ki let's do something on this very jargonous term that is used in majority of the startups that's product market fit ki what is product market fit what do you mean by that so yeah in order to even before i start the whole point was that i wanted to give you a some sense of that what exactly do you mean by problem solving right where does the concept of product management or doing startups actually comes in and from where does it start in the life of a user journey i hope i am clear and audible to everyone right i just need a yes on the chat if everyone is aligned i can just move it forward awesome guys thank you very much so i'll quickly share my screen right and let me know if you can see my small presentation that i've quickly that is there which writes something that is completely unrelated which people might feel to the topic that we had which is product market fit but then again i wanted to kind of start it from there and then take it towards culminate it towards product market fit so I've talked about something that is very interesting to me very curious like what do you mean by mental models and why have i why i have talked about mental models to build a great pm career right so you see a small small cartoon on the right side of it which is the art of product management let's see how many features can we cram in in the product right this is the typical notion ki jitne zyada feature banaoge utna acha product ho jayega that's how we define a product right so first of all now sabse pehle ye baat karte hain yaar ki even before i talk about product management there is something that i want to fundamentally talk about which is yaar a first principle jaisi cheez hoti hai na ji product manager ke sath bahut jod rakhi hai ki first principle thinking first principle thinking what is this first principle thinking right ye first principle thinking aati kahan se theek hai so if we have to very very in a, in a very nutshell define a first principle it is like the most cellular block of an idea which doesn't change with time which cannot be broken for, further right it's like the electron the part of the atom right ek electron ko quarks mein aap tod sakte ho lekin let's assume that's the final building block right jiske niche aap niche nahi ja sakte that's how you start thinking about the first principle now why first principles are important first principles are certain facts which are like axiomatic to us like hum kehte hain line is straight right there is no proof for it right agar hame karna hai to euclidean geometry se bahar jana padega and we will have to figure out that why a line is straight right that's the first axiom that we look at that is something that is very core to the job of a pm and finally to the job from building products towards completion where we take it towards like building great products now how is how are these two things related like ek chhota sa first principle hai you need water to stay alive even after 100 years in the future in the civilization humans will still need water to stay alive right or mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell right now another very strong first principle which we develop in using products or building products is the very same fact that a product value for a customer brings happiness right now how do i define that let's assume tomorrow if you have to go from bombay to delhi right and you have two options right and both are by car for example one is a bus second is a mercedes right 99% of the time if i ask you this question what will you choose traveling by bus from bombay to delhi or some other closer place or by a mercedes give me one or two in the chat one is mercedes second is bus i can people can respond in the chat i think obviously right this is something that will happen that people will people want to travel by a mercedes why because it gives you comfort 
it gives you value right so it also gives and comfort effectively drives happiness now that's the first first principle that anything which is a better solution to the current problem or need that you have if it's a 10x better solution it will bring happiness or comfort in your life that's the first first principle right like a very simple example of it is swiggy right earlier you had to go to a restaurant order food come back and it used to take you 3 hours effectively to get the right kind of food that you want to eat right now what do you do you open the swiggy app click on an order and it comes to you right so that is the first principle i'm talking about the second first principle is that happiness brings repeat usage right now let's assume again you are using swiggy and the comparison is going to a restaurant if a five times do you want to use the same application what would you prefer using swiggy or would you would, would you prefer actually going to the restaurant and ordering food and looking for things over there right so obviously it is going to be the first one which is swiggy so happiness uh, value brings happiness and happiness brings repeat usage give me a second guys sorry extremely sorry yeah now if we tie these two first principles together which is value brings happiness happiness brings repeat usage you consistently use that solution and again again when you when you tie these two first principles together it kind of builds something what you what we call a mental model a mental model is an explanation of a thought process of how something works in a real world using a string of first principles so it basically means value brings repeat usage and that is something that we product managers effectively talk about and you must have heard about it that if the product is valuable it will have organic retention organic but ye yahan se aa raha hai this is where it's fundamentally coming from that value brings repeat usage now ab aage chalte hain theek hai to yahan tak aapko samajh mein aa gaya ki yaar ki pm kya hota hai ek product manager fundamentally एक मेंटल मॉडल क्या होता है अब हम इस पे आते हैं कि प्रोडक्ट मैनेजर क्या होता है सॉरी आई जस्ट स्विच इट अक्रॉस यू अंडरस्टैंड नाउ व्हाट्स अ मेंटल मॉडल एंड देन नाउ वी हैव टू इफेक्टिवली मूव टुवर्ड्स व्हाट आर प्रोडक्ट मैनेजर्स या व्हाट इज प्रोडक्ट मैनेजमेंट पर से सबसे पहले ना ये समझते हैं कि प्रोडक्ट क्या होता है ठीक है प्रोडक्ट इफ यू कॉल इट इन हिंदी इट्स कॉल्ड अ वस्तु एनीथिंग दैट एड्स वैल्यू टू योर लाइफ राइट नाउ अ प्रोडक्ट मैनेजर इज समवन who effectively takes care of that product manages that product in such a way that he is able to provide you consistent value with time consistent value with time now what is this product iska actual thought process kya tha so the mental model is that any problem that you face you would effectively need a solution for it right any problem like if you need food to eat ab khana chahiye aapko khana khane ke liye if you need if you want to travel somewhere you need a car you need a bus you need some vehicle to effectively take you from one place to another so everything to your problem to your question there is a problem there is a solution to it right so basically if you understand like if there is anything that is pertaining to which is a need of yours every individual would want to solve it the only difference between a pm and typically this particular part is that you as an individual are solving needs is that pms typically typically take that take take those needs and try to solve it at scale koshish karte hain so scale pe solve kare jaise main ek simple example deta hu tomorrow if you want to open a travel agency right what is a travel agency at the fundamental core right it is basically an excel sheet of supply and demand right on left side there are people who want cabs and right side there are cab holders who have cabs you marry them together now if i tell arjun or somebody in the crowd to do it for 100 people maybe they are smart people they can do it for 1000 they can do it right for 10000 maybe they can still do it but what if i ask you this question build the same service for 100 million people then it becomes a hard problem very very hard problem because then it's not just a supply and demand problem now this is where product managers come in this is where they say that okay we will solve a problem for you we are problem solvers but we will solve this problem at scale for you and we will figure out a solution to build that at scale right so logically who are pms PMs fundamentally सबसे पहले ना ये एक जार्गन है कि कुछ और करते हैं PMs fundamentally problem solver होते हैं they are just good problem solvers right and what do you mean by problem solving giving 10x more value than the preceding solution this is very important 10x better than what the current experience they try to build that kind of an experience and keeping this into account that this experience can be vertically scaled also ki yaar aisa nahi hai ki main 100 user ko hi de pa raha hu ya hazar ko de pa raha hu ye 10000 ke liye bhi hona chahiye that is why there is a very common question that i keep telling in interviews that ki uh, a halwai is also a problem solver for you how many of you who is a sweet owner a halwai give me a yes in the chat
Okay, got it. Whatever. So the what I'm trying to put across is uh, even a sweet vendor is a problem solver for you. He's a funder functionally problem. You are going there and asking for a sweet, but why don't you call him a PM? Why don't you call him a sweet owner only? Why don't you call him? Uh, you are a product manager. The reason fundamentally for that is that that a sweet owner can solve a problem for hundred people, two hundred people, ten thousand people in his locality, but he cannot build a system around it in which can serve ten million users when 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 they ideally want to have sweets. So a milk distribution problem at smaller scale is the dukan. What a milk distribution problem at scale is a milk basket which got sold for hundred million dollars. The same problem. But the only difference is one is not solved at scale, one is solved at scale. So PMs are people who effectively do two things: they solve problems at scale, and they also look at a 10x better solution than the existing solution. This is the fundamental definition of a product manager. कि एक product manager क्या होता है? वो एक user need ढूंढता है, उस need का solution ढूंढता है, and कोशिश करता है वो solution scalable हो. it is very scalable by nature so that we can scale it to 100 million users right and it is also 10x better than the preceding solution this is exactly how you define a product now ab here the next thing that you want what i want to discuss about is that what are the skills for you to effectively build a great product as a product manager and then achieve something which we will discuss later in the session called product market fit right what do you mean by product market fit now logically what happens is any problem that you look look in your life right how do you identify a problem i told you that a pm is a problem solver right he solves great problems he actually breaks it down builds scalable solution all of the, that that is right but the first question is how do you identify a problem how do you figure out that there is an actual need now this comes from a very very strong framework which is a part of a, even about religion and if you look at the fundamental thought process is that you identify needs through using the virtue of compassion karuna se aapko pata chalta hai ki basically if there is a need in the market what do i mean by that let's assume uh, somebody maybe and it is actually a possibility that a lot of people might have faced the brunt of covid right people in your family friends who might have been affected in some way right now assume that you are a person and your best friend is kind of affected by covid What's the first thought that comes to your head? कि यार मेरा दोस्त इतना सफर कर रहा है, can't I build a solution for him which solves his problem? Which it can be taking him to a building him an oxygen cylinder or doing whatever, right? But some thought comes in your head कि can I solve this problem for him? Where did it come from? Because you are attached to that individual in some way. So compassion is the thought that effectively led you to the thought that okay, there is a problem that I am facing or some of my closed ones are facing. How do I solve it? Now compassion typically leads you towards curiosity. Like, ki, let's assume you are a pet lover, right? And you like pets, and you see every day in your society a car is coming and killing pets, right? It is happening. So what is the first thing that will come in your head here? Okay, if, can I figure out a solution in some possible way which can speak my curiosity and effectively solve this problem at all? Now this makes you curious, innately thinking about it. Ki, how do I solve it? How do I solve it? Now. the moment you realize this curiosity is there and the moment you realize the scale of the problem it translates into a passion now let's assume if i ask you this question ki guys uh, save a pet in your society right you see it is not a problem that is affecting only one or two pets every day maybe there are certain pets in your society who are getting killed by cars maybe they don't they don't have food so what you realize that it's a huge problem it's not just my society level problem it's a problem that is affecting across the nation across the country and stray dogs or stray pets are actually a problem which are not getting a solution that they are not getting the right food owners they are not getting right food and animals are suffering right what it, there are two solutions to it the first solution is you think of a smaller scale solution okay i will tie up with an ngo will figure it out and do something around it but that's a solution that might help 1000 pets 2000 pets 5000 pets right the other solution to it is that somebody thought of it said that there is a supply and demand of pets right people who want pets and people who don't have pets right and i can bring them on a platform and effectively take this street stray dogs and put them on a platform and let them buy them and that is actually which start which started animals which just recently raised a 40 million dollar round as a startup they are a pet marketplace right and that's what they did 
that's an amazing concept that they thought of and that built a passion now this problem that they're solving it can it can scale up to millions of people they built a marketplace they give you options that what kind of pets do you want what what exactly would you need from them is there a service that and they built a and they raised a 37 million dollar series around it's that big a market so the problem is just around you right we always talk about these things problem problem there are so many problems that you that you trivialize in your daily lives problem but that can scale into a huge problem because people are there so curiosity leads you towards passion that key is my solution scalable enough that it can actually solve the problem right so passion leads you towards the scale of solution which is the art of critical thinking right that what how will i make this solution applicable to a million users or 10 million users and that is when you start about scale of thinking now there's a very interesting dichotomy that happens here a problem which is at a very cellular level is an easy problem to solve you want food you go to the kitchen you ask your mother and she will give you food right but the moment you make it a problem which is affecting 10000 people you have to make a community kitchen you have to get a network of uh, kitchens you have to get a network of uh, cooks net a, a, a supply of food right now this single variable problem becomes a multivariate problem you need multiple kitchens you need food supply you need people who are cooking it you need marketing people you need all of those so a single variable equation which is at a very fundamental level a very simple problem at scale becomes a multivariate problem like because supply, like uber uber is not just a supply and demand problem uber has multiple problems. compliance is an issue security is an issue right multiple things are there an issue which they have to take care of it right women safety is an issue right refunds is, is an issue right so this becomes a very complex problems and that is where coming back the concept of mental models comes in now a pm is someone who solves a non deterministic problem into a deterministic solution which is understandable because now at scale problem big problems become ambiguous so the pm actually looks at a mental model and mental model is something that doesn't change with time that if i keep the fundamentals of that mental model at as my core anything i build on top of it will be scalable like if i believe that customer service is going to drive retention as a fundamental thought pillar if I build any features on with that thought intact, it will be valuable to the customer, right? So it builds that art of critical thinking from a thinking standpoint, problems arise when you closely understand the pain point. And that is why you would see that most companies, they are built by entrepreneurs who have actually faced that problem themselves in some way or the other, like Zomato became that way. Travis Kalanick, Uber started the same way. Travis was in New York. Right. And all of they have actually faced them and they eventually became their passion that that's it. This is a huge problem to solve and I need to solve it. Right. So the first thing that you need to develop as a great problem solver is something called art of compassion, which leads to art of critical thinking. So be compassionate to people, try to listen to them, right. Try to feel their pain points that what is happening. And then you will get a lot of problems which can evolve into potential big companies and solutions in the future. Right. That's the first thing. Now, the second interesting part that comes from this is that yaar, ye art of critical thinking, bata diya mujhe, but it develop kaise hota hai? how does it get developed? Right. The simple and the, and the difficult answer, the simple yet the difficult answer to this approach is to build something called the art of observation. Art of observation is extremely and observation doesn't necessarily mean words like it can be the body language of the user. Like I'll give you a very simple example. Whenever you book a cab right and there is someone you are booking a cab for and you, you are effectively bringing him across if the driver comes late for five minutes what is the typical body language are late to where does he come so logically your your body language also tells a lot about that whether you are enjoying that solution or you're not right so as pms we are very very observant people we talk less but which is very counter to what I'm doing right now. But then again, we talk less and we observe more, right? The reason for this is that whenever you give, when you are very observant and you're very accessible and compassionate, right? People open up, they tell you their real, real problems. 
that's what happens like if there is a tutor in iit bombay or somewhere in any places like in my college a teacher who who is very accessible to me who can relate to me speaks to me the same tone that i want to speak to right it becomes very easy for the student to tell their problems to that particular teacher that this is my problem this is where i'm stuck right so one very fundamental principle that comes from this art of observation is sometimes the best way to gain control is to give control give control to your end user he feels that he is in control driving the conversation and he will tell you everything about what the problems are right once you listen to the consumer right that why what what problem are you solving then you closely understand his actual pain points and remove bias from there and boom here you build the hypothesis like let's assume tomorrow there's a problem that you face in iit bombay and i think this is everywhere in in general in engineering colleges a problem that you need notes and notes hamesha exam se pehle hi chahiye hote hain logon ko usse pehle koi koi padhai nahi karta usse pehle usse pehle hi notes chahiye hote hain aur notes ke liye kya karte hain what people do is they go to their seniors ask for notes ki where where is it where is it and there is no closed repository now somebody feels that it's a huge problem right because if i could have given a repository of notes to my coming juniors or get it from my seniors in a structured way i would be effectively able to score well in my examinations so a very small approach is that if this is actually a need somebody kisi ne kya kiya ek google drive li sare us sare notes usme dal diye ek whatsapp group mein bhej diya wo message and tell them forward this to everyone who needs this if that is actually getting forwarded right that means there is value in the concept if it's actually happening right and that is the simplest possible way you tested the hypothesis that this was an actual problem and i need to solve it right and then if that is organically happening then you can build a website on top of it you can build an app on top of it whatever you want to do it right so boom your art of observation talking to people actually led you to a solution where very very where you solved it in a very nimble way so the first thing is that whenever you get approached by a problem right you build a hypothesis around it a hypothesis is nothing but a if statement if this is there if x is there y would not happen or y would happen right if i have a repository of notes i will achieve good marks in my examination so the functional part is x is there y would be the outcome of it right and it and the hypothesis can be wrong also that's that's not a problem right but what i'm trying to put across is if you closely listen to the consumer actually felt the need of it he will give you the right hypothesis he will give you the right need right so that's the first thing that you develop which is art of critical thinking in order to become a better problem solver or a better thinker now ye baat ho gayi the first thing that is that has happened is very clear that now art of the second thing that a product manager or a startup owner or an entrepreneur for that matter has to develop is called what is called the art of prioritization now why is this important like if i ask arjun today ki arjun yaar aisa kar ki tell me the last 5 years of your life and give write me a story around it he will start writing he can write 5000 words around it sir main yahan pe padhai kar raha tha kota mein main idhar padhai kar raha tha then i applied to the iit exam then i got these many marks then mera iit mein hua lekin mujhe pehle year mein acha nahi laga i didn't like the classes then i started started thinking that it, so he can tell me a huge story around it but what if i converse the question and ask him okay arjun tell me your last 5 years but in 100 words and that's the constraint that i'm putting across to you so he'll automatically start filtering out things he start filtering out things because he wants to keep the depth of the message the same whereas he has to filter out the unnecessary information right now why is this important i'll give you a very simple example today most of the products that we see in which we talk all of these terms product market fit lean startup etc all of these are digital products right majority of the places you don't yourself know the customer he is coming on a platform which you have built now assume that if you are not able to write a story in 100 words to someone who is actually your interviewer or might be your friend or something why do you expect the person who doesn't even know you to spend 15 seconds on your text on on your value proposition very logical like aaj tumhe gaadi leni hoti hai aur tum jante ho kisi gaade wale ko to wo aa jate hai bhaiya main 10 minute mein aa jaunga why do you expect that a customer coming on uber doesn't get a car in 10 minutes would come back on the app he doesn't know you right so logically you have to effectively condense the message in such a way that it's parsable in the next 15 20 30 seconds right and that is what a skill you have to develop another thing the concept of an elevator pitch 
do you really think the concept of an elevator elevator pitch was because the vc or the investor who is effectively listening to the solution is is actually that busy that he cannot give you more than 60 seconds in an elevator that's actually not the case the actual scenario is that he wants to see that whether in 60 seconds you can pique his curiosity by giving so much value across that he wants to give you 30 more minutes to talk to you because he is making that decision then and there ki ye mere time ke worth hai ki nahi hai is it really worth my time if he cannot prioritize the information that he has in his head in 60 seconds and give me only that information that's relevant to me so logically how will he effect so this is something that you start doing as part of your life and auto and also think of from a thinker standpoint yaar your brain is like a limited memory mobile phone kitni cheeze yaad rakhoge you only remember those things which are important to you right so logically you have to build a very strong structure of prioritization in your head because a customer might give you 500 needs but you have to prioritize them to which are the most valuable ones right and one of the best way to start becoming a better person at prioritization is something called a concept called constraint thinking right let me ask you one very interesting question where would we you be more innovative if i give you 20 lakh rupees to buy a car uh, or no or or build a car for that matter and 1 crore rupees to build a car but the only point that that is there is that in both the cases the constraint is that the car has to be of same quality it's not like the 1 crore car can be 10x better they have to be of the same quality where will be you more innovative you will come up with jugads in the 20 lakh wala case you will figure out solutions ki yaar ki main kya kar sakta hu ki how do i make it a better car of the same quality like like what did elon musk did do there were already super cars who were of the same power same everything same value he effectively used innovation to bring the cost to such a level at 30000 that a 30000 or 50000 dollar tesla is competing with a million dollar car right and that is where the innovation was brought he he optimized batteries he used his engineering skills did all of those things right prioritized very simply prioritized and effectively brought that across so whenever there are constraints on your life you always try to innovate if you are truly passionate about the outcome you always try to innovate right so what i did like one of the reasons that i started writing on linkedin very simply most of the people think that i started writing on linkedin because it created a brand for me yeah that's an external reason for sure it does that but the internal reason was ki udhar 1300 character ki limit hai sir uske aage maine likh sakta so whatever i have to think is in that in that bucket list of 1300 characters and I, and if i don't position my idea the right way if i don't make it relevant if i don't position it in the format that it's easy to consume in 1300 characters then i would not effectively have any impact right and that is how i started building and slowly it was initially it was very bad when i started 15 months back i used to look at my message memory isko mai bhi padhunga kya ye to mai isko to mai khud nahi padhunga what i have written here but over time it improved because it's like a mental gym slowly it's like like when you want to go to a gym you don't if i tell uh, arjun tomorrow that uh, arjun uh, if you pay 1 crore rupees you have the body of rithik roshan tomorrow not possible right it's it can't happen right the simple way to do it is that you consistently keep practicing again and again again and again and do it over a period of time when it becomes a life process of yours you start thinking the same way you started doing the same way right and that is the same with it's a mental gym right you're you're doing it every day every day every day and it's more like a tactic that becomes a part of your life so that's the second thing the art of prioritization that if you can prioritize your information the most limited information would give you the most maximum value right that's the second thing now third thing that is very interesting to look at this particular place is something that i've always spoken about which is called the art of feedback now what is art of feedback right now why is feedback important that's the why fundamental question that you should i can also talk about yaar are mai to steve jobs hu sir mai jo bana dunga wo sab hit ho jayega aise nahi hota right majority of the times it doesn't work like that right what what really is an important factor here is that since it's a non deterministic problem there might be certain variables which you miss like for example uh, let's assume you are making a medical uh, an app for pregnancies tracking the pregnancy cycle of women right you might have thought that you will build it in based on cycles based on based on their health their medical history etc but women also make choices 
a lot of choices thinking on the lines of what is their mood type right now whether they are feeling anxious whether they are feeling happy right what are the insertions there now you built a solution but you didn't take into account the design part the mood part into it trust me women will not use it they will not enjoy it they genuinely feel yeah yeah it's a very rote app why am i using it i'll rather track it on my calendar so now this is one variable which you might have missed right which you thought that you were very very clear in your hypothesis but you missed that variable that is why it is very important that whenever you make a product right the feedback cycle is extremely 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 important right and what is the best way effectively to drive more feedback is by being fundamentally accessible talking to more people right whenever there is something of a product that you make or a solution that you make you become more accessible one of the reasons that i typically write on linkedin is to get a lot of feedback about my own thought process my own way of building products my talk my having most of conversation like i'm having a conversation with you guys this is another way of me figuring out that what works and what doesn't work right now the feedback cycle also has a very strong conundrum right feedback also leads to this a problem which is very very indistinguishable from feedback but and there there's a very thin line which is called bias right one of the important things is chalo yaar ye main galat audience ko ye sawal bol raha hu lekin how many of you have heard this statement ki iit jaoge 1 crore rupaye kama loge any of you have heard that right i think every one of you would have heard that statement somewhere in your life right now what is this किसको मिले एक करोड़ मुझे अभी आज तक नहीं पता चला मुझे कि ये किसको मिल रहे हैं करोड़ करोड़ ठीक है बिसाइड्स माय कंप्यूटर साइंस वाले दोस्तों के अलावा तो किसी को नहीं मिल रहे यार अगर मिल तो दिस इज एन एग्जैक्टली दिस इज समथिंग कॉल्ड व्हिच गेट्स डेवलप्ड व्हेन इनफ पीपल रिपीट द सेम थिंग ना देयर इज समथिंग दैट गेट्स बिल्ड दैट्स कॉल्ड कंफर्मेशन बायस जस्ट बिकॉज़ 50 पीपल हैव सेड इट इट्स राइट नो इट इज नॉट right like one of the very simple examples that i keep speaking is my mother comes to me and she says ki are yaar ye anguthi pehen lo aapko gussa kam ho jayega main bolunga yaar ki ab there are two approaches to it the first approach is either you reject it and say ki yaar ab kya baat kar rahe ho yaar mummy superstitions what are you saying how can a stone take care of my anger the other approach to it is that oh wow i am definitely interested in astrology yes this actually happens now both the approaches are wrong for a pm both the approaches are bias led the third approach for a product manager would be to be objective about it and ask for more data right kiske liye kaam kiya hai kyun kaam kiya why do you think it has worked one reason can be that if you are using a copper copper instrument copper has some sort of medicinal properties right and it it helps you with your health right there can be rational reasons around it right so product managers stay away from this thought called confirmation bias and they always take everything as an objective feedback the, this is the responsibility of a pm to look objectively at the world at how it is not through the lens of a person so logically whenever a pm is truly passionate any feedback that comes to you you declutter the opinion side of it and only look for objective feedback in it if somebody says you have shitty content you actually look at around which are the aspects for which he called it a shitty content and improve that you don't care about what what people say so you are very objective around that now what what worked for me merely humor worked for me right i write content on humor people want to enjoy humor they want to laugh so they effectively give me a lot of feedback like today i got a feedback that in one of my videos i have been consistently referring to the gender as he 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 and and i got that feedback that somebody said yaar yaar tum gender neutral nahi ho jabki mera wo thought hi nahi tha but then again that's a feedback i never could have thought about it that people look at it that way also right i was talking about more passionate about how do you solve stuff and by design because i am a male i shifted towards that connotation right this is by design never intended that but i got that feedback again it it will it helps me identify corners in the world how which the world views the world right and that is something that you, and one of the best way to do it is be humorous right because humor makes you accessible people will talk to you like aaj bhi agar main byju mein ja ke if i am being this guy ki or i am a principal product manager i am this and that and nobody will speak to me but if i go to a back end engineer are yaar kya chal raha hai yaar bolega shravan yaar fix to laga diya lekin phat jayega let's take care of it in the next release right so it makes you very now these three things together the art of critical thinking the art of prioritization and the art of feedback this acts like 
a typical operating system ingestion is out of critical thinking because you're observing people getting more information inside getting more ideas inside the prioritization bit is the processing part of it where you prioritize declutter information and the feedback is the output part which also comes back as a loop consistently keep doing it doing it to the point that effectively 70 percent of your audience says that the thing that you've built for us whatever that solution service product is actually solving our need in a in a positive way the moment that happens is the moment when you achieve this jargonous term called product market fit product market fit basically means when you have built a solution which effectively solves the need of the market and 70 percent of the people in the market actually say that this solution has solved our need and they would want to use it again and again like if you go back to uber once i rarely feel that there will be people in the in the chat ki jab bhi uber nahi chalti to wo sochte hain ki are yaar chalo aaj to main gaadi khud dhoondunga aaj to main figure out karunga aaj to mere ko time mila hai aaj main yahi karunga aaj main niche ja ke dhoondunga ki gaadiyan kahan chal rahi hain you don't do that because it has created a structure of value in your head or a more leaner example of it it would be ki irctc versus going back to the stations Whenever you don't get a ticket on IRCTC, how many of you people pick up your bike and actually go three hours and go to stand in a station line? Doesn't happen. It has brought a paradigm shift. It has brought a thinking shift that I am getting 10x more value. I would not go there. And that is how it's satisfying the need of the market. So IRCTC is not a bad product, first of all. People think it, it has a poor UX, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But you always compare solution based on their preceding solutions. The preceding solution was you going to the railway station and standing in a line. How many of you do that, right? So this consistently keeps happening again and again over a loop, over a loop, and you consistently keep doing it and reach to a point where the market says, yes, we like your solution and it is satisfying maximum of our needs and we would want to continue using your solution. So that is where you see that people who go on order on Swiggy for first, second, third time, they effectively consistently keep ordering consistently keep ordering and that is exactly what a pm does he makes you habituated to a product which is 10x better and simultaneously improves on the product based on your feedback and consistently keeps doing it till he achieves the critical mass where maximum people are talking good things about the product that is where we achieve and if you have product market fit then there is absolutely no problem then most of the time then you have to just put your thoughts on growth because I've already fixed the product, right? Now, the last part that I would say, and then I would open the conversation for general people to talk about whatever questions they want to ask, is that what we actually got a sense of today is not, I didn't want to talk about the execution part of a PM's life, that what's a sprint, what's agile, what how tech is built. You're smart people here, you can figure that out. That's not the point that I was. I came here. The whole point is to give you the skill set to focus on where you can become a better thinker in life. And those skill sets, I have just put it down into the three aspects, which is critical thinking, which is prioritize. And these are the three aspects which consistently work in a loop that make you a better entrepreneur, better product manager, better any problem solver that you look forward in your life, right? You look at the art of critical thinking and put put across your thoughts and just put it across in such a way that, oh, yes, uh, I'm looking at the uh, problems. I'm hearing enough problems. I'm getting more ideas and effectively solving them. Then comes the art of prioritization that how do I put that in a, in a way that minimum effort gives the maximum value to the customer, right? Simple way I told you, if you want to build a design website, if you want to build a product which effectively solves notes for people, you don't have to even make an MVP. You just have to make a Google Drive and share it on WhatsApp and see what's the reaction. That's how you prioritize the simple problem. And then the art of feedback, that you should be receptive to feedback. You should not be biased. You should not be arrogant. So humility, that is where we talk about, like PMs talk about empathy, empathy. This is where empathy comes in. Are you capable enough to get criticism also and find value out of it? Right? You consistently keep doing these three things together and you will be... In, you would just insanely realize that in the next three months, four months, you would drastically improve as a thinker. 
And one of the best ways to have conversations and improve your critical thinking is be vocal about what you learn on social media, on LinkedIn. Let get as much feedback on your thinking, get as much feedback on your thoughts. And simultaneously, you improve whatever you're building. You're maybe you're aspiring to be a product manager. You're, you're actually starting wanting to start up in life. You're, you're actually wanting to help some startup in life, maybe build some startup, or you want to do something. Whatever, whatever aspiration do you have? You put your thoughts across and ask for feedback. But most of the people have this problem. You know, like that like that. Yeah, log kuch galat pol denge to yaar, kya karunga? Meri ho Aisa nahi hota. Right. If you if you're very focused on the problem right, that I want to become a better thinker and I don't really care about the world, I just want to be better at what I do. You will always think of like I'll give you one very simple example. Uh, what happened with me was that uh, a lot of people asked me initially that yeah you write a lot of humorous stuff on LinkedIn and product management is so serious. Doesn't it take away the vibe that you are you might not be a very serious PM or you might be someone just funny just writing something about maybe a comedian not a product manager. So I asked a very simple thought to them that does funny content stop you whenever you look at, he said, yes. And I said, if that funny content has some information which is valuable to you, will you retain that information? He said, yes. Right. And I said, if, if, if that information is written, will you use that information? He said, yes. And I said, all three parts you're saying yes to me. Then why should I really care about what people are thinking? If, it, if you find the people who find it valuable, they will stay and eventually they're going to stay. It is the same example that tomorrow, if you're good at cooking, right? Do you cook for because people say, Are you a good person? You are a good person. You You like doing it, right? Once you consistently keep doing it, now anything, if you're truly passionate about the process, any feedback that you get moves from an opinion stage and becomes a feedback. Right? It, you are not worried about if people say, Aaj ki date mein jab logon ka koi bhi aspiration pura nahi hota na, wo isli hota hai kyunki wo outcome driven hota hai. Ki the outcome decides their happiness or unhappiness in life. You get a great job, I am happy. You don't get a great job, I am, I am unhappy. This is, then you were never truly passionate about the actual job that you wanted to do. Because do you leave starting uh, cooking because somebody says you, you, are, uh, you are cooking bad food? Nope. If you're truly passionate about, or you do you leave singing just because somebody says that you don't have a good right? So once you consistently have this process in products also, that my solution might be poor, right? I get feedback, I'll improve it. Do that consistently without thinking a lot about the opinion of people and working on that feedback, you will achieve a great, great, great solution in some amount of time. And in that amount of time, you will have so many learnings as a thinker that what, what you should focus on, what you should not focus on. And simultaneously, you move to a point in life where you achieve this state, which is product market fit. And then retrospectively, everything makes logical sense. If someone a billionaire it it had to happen because he was gifted. Doesn't work like that, right? They have put a heart and soul into it to apply these three core levers to eventually build a great product and eventually achieve this uh, golden state of product market fit and then growing their company beyond our skills that we look at. So I leave all of you with this, these three levers to think about to effectively improve. And there are some great books that you can leverage. Like one of my favorite books is Leaders Start With Why. Or you can do CS183. It's a free course on YouTube on entrepreneurship. You can also check out Masters of Scale. So all of these things will effectively let you focus on all of these dynamic aspects of your life. And then trust me, if you consistently keep doing it after three months, you'll definitely come up with some great solution to your problems, to whatever you are thinking about, to whatever you want to achieve and simultaneously become a better PM. And if you want to be a PM and simultaneously, if you want to be an entrepreneur, give you the best amount of feedback, the best suggestions to be an entrepreneur. So I think this is where I will leave you with. I think this is where I would kind of open the podium to ask people if you want to ask any questions, feel free to ask. And thank you very much. That's it. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you. It was really insightful to, you know, uh, the entire presentation and everything. And it will definitely yeah. help all the people here. So if anybody has any questions regarding product management or, you know, even uh, entrepreneurship startups or product market fit or the entire presentation or life in general, you know, this guy is the one to talk to. So.
in the first yep i see a raised hand yes prana yep yeah hi shravan i wanted to ask you that uh, when there are lot of existing competing solutions uh, how does one differentiate themselves see prana differentiation can happen in two ways right the first way that you look at differentiation is give me a second sorry yeah yeah so the first way to look at differentiation is that if you see what is fundamentally differentiation differentiation at a y level is that whatever product there is whatever current existing solution is you build a better solution than that and that should be visible to the user there can be two ways to look at it one either you make a completely dynamic different solution which is very different like let me put it this way uh, earlier before uber before the first time even before taxi services did not exist right or if you look at irctc right before the first way that people used to book to get tickets was going to the station and actually buying tickets the second way was there there came brokers into the picture who had their all their setting with this uh, government system and they used to do tickets for you that was a half baked solution right now what did irctc do came towards and built a full fledged digital solution around it so the brokerage model kind of went away right so differentiation fundamentally means you build a better and a more scalable solution in general this can happen in two ways either you do something like IRC, ircctc that you build a completely different digital platform which is better in the terms of needs that people want or there is another way to do it the another way to do it is that you you differentiate your product experience in general like let me put it this way how many of you like like i ask you pranav owns Yeah, you might be interested in learning languages, right? I don't know which area are you from, but you might be interested in learning a certain language like German, French. Maybe you want to go outside India and you want to learn that language. Now there are multiple ways to learn that language. All of these competitors of different different products that there can be government organizations, there can be different apps who, from which you can effectively learn different languages. But what has Duolingo done different? Why is Duolingo a ten billion dollar company? Duolingo is a company which teaches you languages, by the way. they have made the experience of learning languages look like a game so you don't just go there for learning a language you actually enjoy learning a language right so socho agar aisa it's like playing a football game right the outcome is to do a goal right that's the fundament aur sabka outcome wahi hai lekin what if you enjoy the game so much that you are you are there in the game you are learning you are playing that game just because you enjoy it so this is how you differentiate your product layer from your service layer now there are two layers here one is product layer one is service layer a service layer is the value that i am giving you like teaching you a language is a value right and think of it like this some a uh, professor comes to your college and he is a great professor who is who is from industry background he teaches you the same concepts which another professor might teach you who is not from the same background the same things right but his delivery of of the content is very different one person brings a globe actually shows where drilling is done where all of these things are done where engineering is used the other person is reading from a book you would definitely enjoy the first one so the delivery of content is product layer right and the service is the same both are teaching the same things right but the differentiation happened because the service was given in a different way why do you think google pay which is a payment app used uh, uses all these gamification tactics ki aise aise hatao better luck next time all of these things why do you why do you think they do this because they want to make that experience so delightful for you that next time even if you think of a payment right you don't think of any other app you say are yaar bahut maza aata hai google pay mein kai bar to cashback bhi mil jata hai aajkal to milta nahi hai mere ko to waise bhi kami mile theek hai to the generally that is how you create differentiation either you make your product experience that good that even if you have the same service doesn't matter or simultaneously either you build a certain service which is 10x better than the preceding service right both are different ways of looking at it and that is how you build differentiation yeah thank you so much yeah any other questions guys any other questions guys i guess sushant here has a has a question yeah yeah hey sushant hi sir so uh, i had a question on what are your opinions on how uh, artists can make a side business business as to how they can support their passion and uh, earn a stable income at the same time 
yeah i think i think first of all you live in the world of social media right and you will find an audience every voice has an audience nowadays that's how you put it across so right so what is see if you want to really support your income and think of your passion is not just what's the difference between passion and a hobby right you're doing something on a hobby a hobby is more like you do it it's not supplementing your core lifestyle it's not who you are it's just a thing that you like right passion is something which you are very serious about right like i'm serious about product management i want to do i want to build great products it's not just i want to speak about it i actually like the process of building it so what you effectively do is you effectively reach out to the platform that you are on and try to give value to the users identify who are your users who would effectively derive value from it and make content make valuable things for them for them to enjoy once you keep enjoying once you putting put out great content tailor it to the audience you can also effectively monetize that audience like if you are a, if you are a great musician musician right very simple way of doing it is that you can do free concerts online right i'm doing a concert and there can be different platforms like if you are an influencer instagram influencer why don't you make reels around it right so the point is for you to have a voice once you have a voice you can effectively then then do multiple business models on you can teach people that's one way of doing it the other way of doing it is you can actually make those kind of artifacts design artifacts which you can sell across as nfts there are multiple ways that you can do it. you can monetize a lot of stuff like the way i am planning is that going forward agar mai kuch decent decent kuch kar paya to swag wali t-shirts bana dunga and i will sell it across right to people and people can actually relive those those kind of memories so just find the right audience connect with them build trust with them and then effectively start to but initially give them value i am always a very strong proponent of the fact that value should lead to monetization or valuation it should not be the other way around before the customer actually enjoys the value how can he make a choice whenever you buy a car pehle aap test drive karte ho na kyu karte ho well agar uske specs pad ke hi car khareed lete ki yaar yaar itna cc engine hai itna ye hai to fir you never make decisions like that right so whenever value is given to a customer or a user then he gets connected to you in some way and then you effectively try to tell them that if you want to get the same skill out of it why don't you do it yeah. so um, thank you so till the time you gain that voice right till the time you are able to give that value to your audience yeah. then managing both aspects right uh, earning an income at the same time honing your craft and constantly working yeah. on it that yeah. can be a very troublesome thing for many people that is that is troublesome but the whole point there is that see i am a whatever i am maybe i talk about product i am before and foremost a product manager i build things first right and then it comes that teaching that craft to other people but i'm equally passionate about it so i figure out structure that is where the art of prioritization comes in right like i if i feel that i have put certain constraints on my life like i cannot wait beyond 11:30 or i cannot stay awake because my body needs rest right because i need to optimize that time but if you are truly passionate about it it will not feel like work it will not feel like work you will enjoy it right that is the beauty of passion na the the point you are truly passionate about it you will not feel like that it's work it will just be another part of your life that you will that you are enjoying about you are getting in the morning playing your guitar matlab uh, enjoying the entire process and then putting the same clip on youtube it's as simple as that but the moment it starts looking like are it's another task in my life then it's going to be a problem for you because you will have to figure out two hours with it ki kahan pe nikalunga kya karunga that is where the problem comes that is where i tell people that if you want to become anything in your life right first you have to be passionate if you are not passionate na then always things will be for you ki yaar ab maine paise diye hai main yahan pe ab time nikalna padega mujhe fir ye karna padega mujhe that's that's how the problem and you might have seen that in your batchmates the people who are really really passionate about engineering right wo alag macha rahe hain wo life mein alag chal raha hai unka right jo log unko follow kar rahe hain ki bol rahe hain hame kuch waisa karna hai unke liye hamesha load hai ki yaar wo ki bhai humse acha nahi ho raha humse achhi cheez nahi lai ja rahi humse ye acha nahi ho raha we are not able to do all of those things which they are doing because the only difference is not that they are not you are less smarter than they are the only difference is they unme shiddat hai they have consistent passion they want to learn about it their outcome is the process their outcome is the process that's the depth of the statement they enjoy the process more 
एंड दैट इज हाउ इट विल हैपन विद यू मैन मैं कहा लिखता था यार लिंक पे पंद्रह महीने पहले तक आई वॉज आई एम प्रोडक्ट बाइज इन द लास्ट सेवन ईयर्स लिखना तो मैंने चौदह महीने पहले शुरू किया बट आई फील आई वॉज लेट राइट एंड वॉट एवर लिटल आई बीन एबल टू डू इट Thank you so much for an insightful answer. Yeah. Awesome guys, I think we are uh, just yeah. on time. Yeah. It was a pleasure talking right. to you, I think. Yes. Yeah. It was a pleasure having you here, Shravan, right? Product manager from Byju's, the angel investors down, charming product manager from YouTube. Yeah. I personally, yeah. So uh, what I'll do is I'll uh, drop the uh, uh, YouTube link in the chat and I'll also drop it in the WhatsApp group that Technovision has, right? So yeah. a lot of people, as you can see, we in the chat a lot of people enjoyed this session. Yeah. So yeah. Guys, can we have a photo before? Can I request everyone to kind of have show show me the, your beautiful faces if that's possible? Yeah, guys. If possible, you can turn on your camera. चेहरे तो दिखाई सकते हो यार इतनी मेहनत की है मैंने अब चेहरे तो दिखा दो यार <laughs> चलो यार आई थिंक वी कैन अर्जुन यू यू कैन वी कैन टेक अ क्विक फोटो एंड यू कैन यस यस जस्ट या या Thank you guys. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure talking to you. You can reach out to me on LinkedIn at any point of time. Tafri karni hai, kuch bhi karna hai. Reach out to me any time. Always with you. Awesome guys. Bye bye. Take care. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.